Oh, we are back. So Jake and I went to the Marietta Show Me Reptile Show over the weekend to pick up our order from Black Box, who's our awesome uh, Herpeticulture Network sponsor. So we got a bunch of new cages and stuff we got to set up. We got a bunch of these Bio G uh, 18s. This is 24 by 18 by 18. And these are gonna be going in the room for the rhinos. So I figured I'd do a quick video on how I'm gonna get these set up. Sort of my plans for them with the rhinos. They're not gonna be naturalistic or like, they're not gonna be vivariums, they're not gonna be bioactive, but they are gonna be naturalistic setups. So this is the Bio G. And so this has the deeper front lip right here, which is so you can add substrate layers and stuff. If you do do uh, bioactive stuff, dart frogs, whatever. So it's gonna be for the rhino rats. I'm super excited. I've got like five of these things. So I'm gonna set up at least three of them for the rhinos. We'll see how it goes. But first let's get into sort of the plans for it. So for substrate, I'm using this 100% pure cypress mulch. Um, you can get the stuff that's blended at Lowe's. I haven't used the pure cypress. I've always used that, that blended stuff in the purple bag. So this will be a first for me. And then I got some pothos. <laughs> So the nice thing about these pothos is you can get these at Walmart. I think this one's like 10 bucks and you can take these and I sort of split them in half or quarter them and use those in different cages. And then you can get sort of the most out of like per plant. So this will be good. Uh, and then I'm gonna, I have some cork bark. I think the rhinos will like these very much. So stay tuned. And so to talk about these bio G's, uh, I just ordered them without heat. So they just have led lights in them. Uh, you can get them with uh, heat panels, LED lights, UV lights if you want to. And like I said, it has a deeper lip on the front. So if you want to do more substrate layers to add plants and stuff, you can. I'm just going to be planting the pothos in some pots and putting them in there as is. So check it out. You can also get it with or without these deeper screens here. You can get it. This is an add-on. I just figured rhinos... You know, eventually the barons that I just got is also going to be going in here. You know, airflow and stuff is good. They'll appreciate it. I think it'll be nice to to have that in there for them. Stagnant air doesn't do good things for, for stuff. So I'm going to get this sort of wiped out on the inside and then add in the cypress mulch. And then I'll add in the plants and perches and stuff. And you'll see it. So this is it before. And then I'll show you what it looks like after. All right. So with these pothos that you get from the store, whether it's Walmart or Lowe's, you... Uh, you want to take them out of the pot and you want to completely rinse them off. A lot of these companies that they get these these plants from, they use uh, fertilizers and stuff. And so it's good to take these out, rinse all the dirt they come in off. I rinse off the leaves and everything too, real nice. And then I replant them in something organic, just some topsoil or something. Maybe I'll add a little bit of mulch to that just for some extra nutrients. Then they'll be good to go for, for cages. Okay, and when you're done, they should look something like this. All the dirt's gone. Usually you'll get you know, sort of a bigger mass and then some of these smaller ones after it. You can either plant multiple of these in one pot or sometimes I'll take these smaller ones and put them in a, like a glass jar or something and sort of grow them out myself to make more plants to use later so I don't have to buy them every time. So then once I do that, I'll take something like this and split it in half. So basically I have two bigger masses and those will grow a little better in the cages. You can start out with a smaller one like this, but in my experience, they just, it takes longer to get them nice and full, kind of like this. So it's better to start out with a bigger bundle than, than a single sort of cutting in a sense like this. So now we're gonna plant them in some organic soil and get them set up and cage ready. And so to start, I just have a thin layer of that cypress mulch in here before I put some topsoil in. I'll probably add a couple of dead leaves, just some, some extra decay for the plants to actually feed on. Something more natural. Okay, so here's the near finished product. The difference is going to be, I'm gonna get my hands on some more of these manzanita branches and attach another one or two here. And uh, yeah. Let's go, go squeeze box. We're upgrading from that to this. Ooh, vent a new cage. Look, he likes it already. It's these guys are long overdue for an upgrade. That's a 20 quart tub that they've been in since they were a little smaller, now they're bigger.
All right, so I managed to find some more perches. So this has my adult rhinos set up in them. Well, they're not adults, actually, they're close to adults. I got some of these manzanita bird perches here, screwed into the side, just drilled a hole. They come with a washer and a nut, just screw them on there. Got them on some pure cypress, got them with potted plants and stuff in there. And I even put a chondro in, in one of these. So this is one of my male green trees. Had the extra spot, he was in the same rack as these guys. It was time to move him out. So he got a new, he got a new spot as well. This is the chondro setup. Pretty much the same, minus the cork bark. Once those pothos fill out, it'll look really good. Perch from Specialty Enclosure Designs, my buddy David Brahms, give him a shout if you need stuff. And this guy actually just got fed today, gave him a little fuzzy. We'll do the close up. And so these are nice, these perches right here, because you can just, uh, they just screw right into the sides, even has some that are better magnetic. So you can just attach them easily without having to screw into it. Once again, wing nuts. I love using wing nuts on this kind of stuff because it, uh, it's easier to, to remove if I have to. So each uh, BioG comes with five of these little tabs to keep the door closed and then a little thumb screw that works as a doorknob. These are the bio G's, so that means, so this is the bio G model. And so what that means is you have this deeper lip, this should be five and a half inches. Uh, so this just accommodates for your substrate layers. If you go bioactive and just gives, you know, for species that maybe like to dig or burrow a little more, it gives you the option of adding more instead of sort of the traditional, um, I think it's like a two and a half inch lip, if I'm not mistaken, maybe three on the other models. So this is a nice addition in case you have something that needs those those extra substrate layers or if you really want to plant something other than what I've done here, which is just have a potted plant in the inside. So overall, what do I think of the bio -Gs? I think they're awesome. I think they work really well for some of your tree boas, at least younger ones, the rhino rats, chondros, barons racers. I plan to put my new barons. I have a whole empty bio -G right here next to me that doesn't even have anything in it. So the barons will go in there when it gets a little bigger. Uh, they're fantastic for, for a lot of stuff that takes use of, of height. I think at Black Box, we kind of cater them more towards geckos, your chihuahuas, your lychees, your crested, your gargoyles, whatever. But being a snake guy, I love these, especially for your smaller arboreal stuff, smaller chondros like that guy. Uh, they're an awesome size. So they're, they're 18 by 18 by 24. Um, you can get it with or without that mesh on the side. So you can see the mesh right here. You can get that with or without it and just have sort of your standard ventilation cuts. Uh, I opted to go with the mesh. The rhino rats definitely seem to do better, more ventilated enclosures. They like sort of airflow. They like height. So this works out really well. You can get these with the UV instead of an LED and you can get it with a heat panel, but there are add-on options with this. So it's not just what you're what you're looking at here. This is kind of a bare bones setup for me, just because what I'm keeping in, it doesn't really require heat panels. It stays warm enough in this room as is. The Aggie cage behind me has it bumped up in here. On top of, there's a window and I have natural sunlight that comes in in the afternoon. So it gets pretty toasty in here. Would I recommend the Bio G's? Uh, absolutely. It just completely depends on what species you're wanting to keep in them and what you're wanting to use them for. They look great, they look sharp. You can get them in white or black PVC. It's not just white. I've been kind of switching to white just because it does seem to brighten the room a little more. The white does sort of make the room a little less dungeonous. So completely customizable. You got a ton of options. Check them out. Blackboxcages.com. Thank you.